Welcome to HS250, our simulation lab. I'm Melody Cox, I'm a simulation faculty. I'm Gretchen Ozaki, I'm the other simulation faculty. So we wanted to make this video to explain some of the policies and procedures, why you're coming to this place, what does mm -hmm. it offer that's different than clinical, and why we're excited to, to share this mm -hmm. experience with you. Mm -hmm. So, so our philosophy in simulation is very different. This is not checkoffs. You will be checked off on skills. That's important. You need to learn how to do nursing skills and how to do them right. This is a chance to take those skills and apply them to patient care. You may get that experience in the hospital, but we don't know that you will. Some of you won't. And so we've picked patients that your uh, theory instructors said they would like everyone to get to take care of in the hospital, but you may not. So you have that opportunity to take care of them here use the skills that we want you to get to do that you may or may not and uh, really do it at your pace without a nurse telling you do this first collect those supplies you'll be doing all that yourself that really makes this time different because normally in hospital you might have a mover who says okay come here follow me give that med oh let's check on that patient let's go grab these meds oh i grabbed the supplies and you notice the, the quick pace, but you're not in on any decision making. When you're here, you get to collaborate with your classmates to make the decisions. Hey, should we call the doctor? Do we have enough information? Can I give that med safely? How do I use this pump? And that is all real life hospital stuff, but you're not often given the time <laughs> to learn how to do that and make that decision for yourself. So this is different. So having said that, our philosophy here is different too. This is a non-punitive non -punitive setting. You will be graded just on participation, trying hard, and thinking about it afterwards, writing up your reflection of what went well, how did we communicate well, what could we have done differently. So having said that, this is our philosophy for um, our sim lab. And here underlined it says, we believe every participant is intelligent, capable, cares about doing their best, and wants to improve. We expect you to come doing your best. If you make mistakes, that's okay, because we'll stop, we'll learn from it afterwards. So you aren't graded on making mistakes. So come ready to work hard and do your best and learn. Uh, you don't have to come and be perfect. That's right. It's not about perfection. We're practicing here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we know some participants find simulation activities uncomfortable or stressful. This is truly a learning environment. You are not expected to be perfect. We don't ask that you be perfect. In fact, we would prefer to see your real thinking and work together to create a good patient safe experience. It's, you're not going to get extra points for being perfect. Mm -hmm. So that's a, out of the question. And um, having said that, we do want you to treat the mannequin as if it's real. So whatever you would do, if it was a real patient, we want you to do that. They do a lot, they have breath sounds, heart tones, bowel sounds, pulses. It will talk to you, so you have to ask questions. The things the mannequin can't do, like squeeze your hands, we still want you to do it. And the mannequin will say, I'm squeezing harder on the right than the left, or I'm squeezing equally strong. So everything is gonna be do it for real. Don't ever say, I'm pretending. Mm -hmm. This is where you're gonna do it for real. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are pupil changes. Use your light, look for the perlap, because the pupils do change. Mm -hmm. So you, we might be surprised what real feedback you'll get, and anything that you don't get real feedback, you'll receive the mannequin response. Mm -hmm. So the, the simulation in the future, will be audio and video recorded for learning and debriefing purposes and possibly for training simulation faculty. So this is not to be used for embarrassment, grading, showing all my friends and family. It is none of that. We might have, and we would let you know if we were recording, um, it's, we can use it because after the scenario, we might be able to play it back and have you talk through your thinking about it. Or we could say, oh, do you remember in this place, in this part you, you broke sterile? And you say, no, I don't remember that. Oh, let me show you. So we can tag stuff, show you, um, maybe go back to areas that you did really great. 
So it's not about punitive. We don't go and share with faculty what's going on. Um, say so and so did this, so and so did that, look at this video. It is not used for grading in that way. We might use good examples to train faculty, simulation faculty, but this is a, a confidential area and we'll get to that in a couple. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, um, so the whole reason we're doing simulation is to improve patient care. We know in the hospital you don't get every experience we'd like you to have. You don't get to practice the skills that you've been checked off on. And so that's our goal here is to give you um, as close to a, a real patient care experience as possible using those exact skills that we know you're going to need and you need practice with before you're ready to go out and be an RN. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What happens in SIM stays in SIM. That is one of our, this is our only bolded sentence in here. That is our most important. Uh, we respect participants' actions and request all of you respect the need, need to maintain confidentiality. If I saw something that was truly concerning, I'm not going to address it in the group setting. I will talk to that student about that thing individually. So we are not here to embarrass you. Uh, feel free to practice, make the pump beep, try to figure it out. It is about learning and trying with your fingers and your your actual actions, but we're not going to embarrass anyone about learning or <laughs> doing something wrong. And if things did go badly during the simulation, when we debrief afterwards, we'll talk through how it can be better, what you were thinking, what you would do next time. It'll be um, a very collegial and positive discussion, not pointing anyone out as having made a specific mistake. Nope. You have or will receive orientation to the Sim Lab. This is this part is of it. it. Yay, welcome. Oh. <laughs> if you have questions about the equipment or the scenario or the environment, please ask us before we start the simulation. Once we start the simulation, you receive report, just like you do in hospital. It's and yours. And the nurse leaves. We, your simulationist is gone. So don't be going inside the room and saying, how do I turn this on? Ooh, what should I do here? It's like you're in the hospital. That's your patient. So figure it out together as a and, team. And use your resources, which may very well be that phone in your pocket. Uh-huh. You can Google something. Uh, I know you know, a couple of students have shared with me that they found new equipment in the hospital and showed their nurse the training video online. That is perfect. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You can do that in here too. If you don't know how to give a med, please look it up. We ask that you do. This is about safe care. And, and work as a group. You'll yes. be in here in a small group and that's to develop communication, collaboration, delegation. If you forgot your flush or your alcohol, you can delegate and ask somebody to go get it for you. Mm -hmm. But um, what we don't want you to do is to look over where you can see us in the corner and say, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Or how do I use this? If we really do see that you're struggling and can't find it, we'll come in. Uh, sometimes we're the charge nurse to come and help you. Sometimes we're the monitor tech coming to check the monitor and show you how to do something on the monitor. Oh boy, I've even yeah. been the equipment person showing you how to use yeah. a bed. I said, I'm a bed repairman once. I didn't, you know, we come in <laughs> well, and make ourselves. If, if we see you need help, we will yeah. step in, but we're not going to break the scenario to do that. We'll come in as somebody, a hospital uh, employee who can help you. Sure. So if you do go run outside to grab a supply that's missed, make sure that you leave correctly, wash your hands, come in correctly, use the hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. Those things we're watching for as well. Yes. We want you to practice the right way so that you always do it the right way. So if you have questions about what we just talked about or about simulations that you have this semester, we are your resource for that information. Your clinical instructors have their 90% of your class grade. They're focusing on your attendance there. We are your 10% for Here. all simulation. So do not sign up for simulations on the day that you're supposed to be in the hospital. 
That is not okay. You need the hours in the hospital and separate self-chosen dates and times here. And any questions about simulation, you can send an email to either Mrs. Cox or me, and we will answer those questions. Your clinical instructor probably won't know. No. Their focus is at the hospital. Right, so please do attend those. This is not for, hey, I didn't show up at the hospital, let me come to Skills Lab. Not what this is for. It's a separate objective, separate time. All right, okay. that we will show you we'll, stuff. Yep, and we'll see you in simulation. <laughs>
and the orientation quiz is everyone's pre-work. And then as we fill out the correct videos and create the assignment, they will be linked here. For third and second semester, you have four simulations that are available. You have to sign up for three of them of your choice that works outside of your clinical schedule. For fourth semester, you have simulations A through F. You have to attend four of them. So there's a few more because you actually meet weekly for clinical. So 10% of your clinical hours is more. All right, that's how you sign up. Moving on. So welcome students. We're here for our simulation today. Our patient today, Don't hurt yourself in the doorway. Okay. Um, we already started. I'm afraid you're late. Oh, uh, I, I can go. I can start. And what are you wearing? A uh, business wear. Business casual. So when you come to simulation, you need to come on time. There will be some pre-work that you'll be assigned that you need to do before you come, and you need to come wearing your skills lab uniform with your your stethoscope, pen light, all your accoutrements that you bring with you to the hospital. And okay. also with your hair up so that a patient can't grab it or it doesn't fall into a skill that you're doing. Okay. Well, can I just stay on this one and then next time I'll do better? Um, you'll need to sign up for another simulation day because we've already started and you didn't come prepared. Okay, I'll sign up for the afternoon session. That would be fine. Okay. That will work. Okay, I'll see you this afternoon and the rest of us will continue on. Okay, welcome to simulation. Perfect. I have your ticket to admit, so I know you did your pre-work. You're in your skills uniform with all your appropriate accoutrements. Wonderful, let's go and hear report on our patient for today. So when you begin simulation, you'll always get to hear report on your patient. Oh, wait, Mrs. Cox, you cannot use an ink pen in simulation. Our oh. mannequins get stained with it. So okay. I have quite a few pencils and I'm always willing to trade your pen for a pencil while you're in here. Okay, we'll do now that. Now we'll be ready to give report. So I'm here to take care of Mr. Patterson. When I come to do my simulation, I usually start with vitals. So Mr. Patterson, I can check his pulses here. I can check his eyes with my pen light, do all my observation, but I can also put his monitor on. When I put his O2 sat probe on, it will automatically bring his saturation up onto the screen. If he's ordered to be on a cardiac monitor, I'm gonna take these leads. Mr. Patterson, I'm gonna move your gown down and put these leads on your chest so that we can monitor your heart. So I'll put my leads on. I'm not taking the actual backing off. They have just a piece of tape that sticks them on and just putting the leads on is fine. You don't need to connect them to any wire. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. And now I have an EKG up here. Everything you need will be here. I also have a thermometer. I'm gonna run this across your temporal artery and it will give me your temperature up here on the screen. The last vital I need to take is your blood pressure. So I'm gonna put your blood pressure cuff on. I'm gonna make sure I have nothing running through this IV, so it'll be okay to use this side. When I put the cuff on, I can come over here 
and tap non-invasive blood pressure, which gives me a little picture of a person. And when I touch that, the cuff will go and you can see the numbers moving as it pumps up and then it will come back down and give me the blood pressure right here. So that's how I'm gonna do vitals on my patient. So let's do a bit of a room orientation. We have in this hospital room, we have the mannequin, we have your vital sign equipment, usually right underneath the monitor, but also there is a little cubby hole in some of them. That's where we like to keep our uh, available airway equipment, or it could be up here on the head wall. This head wall, when it's on, I'll turn it on for one minute, makes it background noise. It also makes it possible for us to turn on the oxygen, okay? But that would be annoying to hear all the time, so I'll turn it off. But you can actually turn on the suction, you can turn on the oxygen and the air and use them appropriately for the patient and the condition. So the patient has a nasal cannula attached right now, but make sure it's actually in the patient and we're using it just like that. Also in the room we have, let's see, we have a bedside table, we have hand sanitizer, we have sharps, we have some gloves, we also have usually a trash can. In that bedside table you'll have elimination equipment, uh, things like bedpans or urinals would be in there. And then we have a communication board. Use this just like you would in hospital. We have some things on there to be helpful. We might have a goal for the scenario on here. We have the date, the patient, maybe the diagnosis, maybe diet activity, goals, and then the care team, which includes a physician. But you're part of the care team when you take over, so maybe you should update the board to include yourself, just like we would in hospital. Then we have phone numbers. So those phone numbers are things that you can use to call um, for your resources. So you would, if you needed to call the physician, you would actually use the phone number, your phone to call. We're not pantomiming that, you do it for real. You call the number that's there. So there will be a, a, some choices for you to call. That's communication board. So things need to be updated, it doesn't guarantee accuracy, so check these against your orders. All right, and that's the room. I'm going to show you how to use our Pixis machine, which is a machine that most accurately represents how we pull medications in the hospital. So it's really a privilege that we have this machine here for you to practice that skill. So come on over here. Take a look at this beauty here. As you can see, we have a top drawer that's mostly IV supplies up here. We have a middle drawer that's mostly some medication for the simulations that you're going to be running. There's medication drawers below. And at the very bottom, let me roll out here, there is a refrigerated section for refrigerated meds such as insulin. So it represents how it would be in the hospital. Um, so let me log on here. If you notice too that there is a computer here, I'll show you how to log into that. There is a section for all of your IV supplies. All of your medication giving supplies are right there. So you have alcohol swabs, a various amount of needles. You have Curo caps. You have the line sterile ends. You have bandages. You have um, little normal salines to pull up medications with. Labels, syringe, let's see, there's flushes. There are, there are syringes with needles to pull up meds. There's also, what is this one? This is an MLs. So you've got TB syringes in here. There's various sizes and types. Okay. 
We've got flushes. Cup. <laughs> Medicine cups. Even next to it, there will be some supplies here if you need it for your scenario. If you're inserting a, an NG tube, your supplies are here. Um, whatever we need for the scenario will be on this shelf. So this is your supply area. Let me show you a little bit about logging in. So right here, I know you can't see it, but right on this table, we have the login information for you. So sign in, choose the meds manager. And I'm using the username and password that's right here. If you're a pediatric student, you would use the PEDS username. Okay, SIM student account. Then the password. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Here we go. It opens up on something called inventory. So if you are looking for something, you could stay here and just type in, let's say, digoxin. Search. It tells me what drawer and pocket I'm in. But that's a really difficult way to do things. We would prefer that you go to patient, choose your patient. So our patient is Demo Matthew. Here we go. And you have all of the ordered medication there. It doesn't mean if you can administer that you should pull out everything. Keep in mind what scenario you're in. If the patient just had a blood pressure drop and we called the, the physician and they put in stat orders for, let's say, a normal saline bolus and, oh, they're in pain so they got two milligrams of morphine and they need one sublingual nitro. I'm really making something random here. Okay, I would only pull out the things I'm going to give. So he might have, this patient might have meds that are ordered for nine o'clock, 10 o'clock administration. But if your task is not, is related to a patient's symptom or a uh, situation, don't go and pull all the meds. Only pull what is for the emergency situation, okay? So you can always go back later and hold something if you couldn't give it on time in the hospital because of a patient situation. Um, I'm not gonna force his morning metoprolol down his throat when his blood pressure is dropping and blah, 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 all the things, okay? So stay focused on the patient situation. Go in there and choose the things. I'm going to select this stat, normal saline, administer. Whoop, did you see that door? It popped open. I'm gonna close this for a second and show you again. I'm clicking the button, administer. Whoa! So that means my med is in here. I can look at the labels. If it's not labeled, then I can look at the size. Look, it says normal saline, 500 mLs. This is what I'm looking for, okay? So this is what I need. But before I close that drawer, there are also all the tubings I need in here too. If you need IV tubings, they are in here. So I need an Alaris pump infusion set. That's my spike for the Alaris pump. It has this blue thing in it that we set into the Alaris pump. So I need that. There is also tubing for um, just gravity uh, dripping, but we're not gonna do that, right? Safety in the hospital you, to use a pump. There's also secondary IV tubing set, but we're not giving an antibiotic. So that is in here if you need it. There's some little normal salines to mix meds. There's other normal salines. So make sure you get your tubing before you leave this compartment. I'm gonna close it. 
come over here. It says to please scan the normal saline now. I don't want you to because we're gonna scan in the room. I'm just gonna exit. Perfect, done with that one. Then I said I wanted to go on to a sublingual nitro. I'm gonna click administer. Oop. Let me show you what happened. A drawer popped out. Okay, I'm gonna close it. Click it again. I'm clicking administer and it popped out. So now I'm looking, all of the words are on the back so I can scan through here. Oh, nitro SL, that's this. I'm gonna get this out, okay? Close the drawer, come back over here. I know it says to scan, do that in the room, please. Next thing I'm going to do is get my morphine out. So knowing that this is going to pop out, I'm going to move this again. Clicking administer. All right. Now this one is a little bit different because all of these drawers are locked except for the one that I need. Ooh, that one's loose. So you can pull on things if you'd like, or you can read them or you can scan and in between each of these compartments is a red blocked um, thing, red blocked color. On the drawer that's unlocked, it's green. So I know that one's unlocked. So I can open it and pull my med. So I will pull my med, close the drawer, click over here. Okay, so I pulled the three meds I planned to give. One, two, and the other one rolled away. Here we go. So I need to think critically about what I need to give these meds. For my normal saline bolus, I have my tubing. That's fantastic. But I need what else? Alcohol swab and a flush. So I'll need to grab the alcohol swab and a flush. After that, I need to give my morphine. So I'm going to do, grab something to draw it up with, and I need a flush before and after. Now I already have a flush, I need an alcohol swab. So think about what you need before you go over there. For the sublingual nitro, eh, you can grab a cup if you like. That's it, okay? So I'm ready to go back to the patient. We'll see you over there. I'm here to show you how to give a med to a patient, how we'd like that to happen in your sim lab. So I just went over and withdrew the medication under the patient's profile. And now you remember I said, don't put administer over there because you're not handing it to them. You come inside the room, wash your hands, get your gloves if you need it and come into this room. So I've logged on to the sim EMR right here. I'll show you a closer look at that later. I've chosen my patient. I'm gonna scan the wristband. Scan, okay, enter, and it pulls up my patient. Once you've done this at the beginning of the scenario, you won't be able to select your patient like that from patient profile. Um, so if you go under MAR, M-A-R, also called Medication Fulfillment on this screen, you come up with a medication administration record. Remember, you're not giving any everything under the record. You're giving what the situation dictates. If your goal on the board or in report was to give the morning meds, then select the morning meds. That doesn't mean you give them the nighttime med, the mealtime med, blah, blah, blah med. If, you're, if you just had a patient situation and called the physician for stat orders, take care of those orders before you worry about morning meds. So select the meds that you're going to give. So I'm scanning through my list. And if you recall, I went and withdrew 500 mLs normal saline. So 
I'm gonna place my cursor in the top block that says scan a barcode. I already scanned the patient. I selected, I made sure that it was the patient. Your name and date of birth is on here, Mr. Patterson. Um, date of birth is 5-1-1966. Is that correct? Do you have any allergies? And this says no known drug allergies, but we confirm with the patient. Now I've placed my cursor in the top and I'm gonna scan the IV bag. Please do this in hospital too. Make sure you scan the bags that you're hanging. There, once I scan it, there's a, a page that comes up that's pretty much blank. There's a button to fill in that says given or partial given or refused, withheld or wasted. I'm gonna select given. Under notes, if this was a stat situation, I could put for BP, I don't know, 60 over 38, whatever I call the doctor about and he'll order this for. Location given is IV, initials, my, my initials are Mac. They used to be Mal, which is bad in two languages, so I'm glad I'm a Mac now. Click create, and that creates an administration. So if you're working in a team, you could hand that off to the, the nurse who's going to put it into the, um, the IV pump and run that. If you see this wrapped plastic around the end, it's because we keep refilling these bags. It allows us to reseal them, okay? But if they are leaking a little bit, it's just because it's plastic over the top of it. It does pretty well though but you spike right through it. It won't cause any um, problems with spiking. It just allows us to, to cover that end again so it won't give you a bath every time you pull on it, okay? So make sure that you put that in the pump correctly. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my next med. So scan a barcode. We are going to scan the nitroglycerin sublingual. So I scan it, press enter. And this one says medication not ordered for this patient. So that's a problem, right? So I, since the, it came up at, with a warning, I'm not gonna give it, I'm gonna reconfirm later, okay? I'm gonna place it back. And then the next one is uh, uh, the morphine. Let's scan it, enter. Okay, and so this one says given, I'm gonna click on given. Then I'm going to prep my med. So I'm gonna clean off the top, just like you would. I'm gonna pull up the med in, in my syringe. And I'm going to make sure I have flushed before and after my med. Now, how fast am I supposed to give morphine? It's not gonna be written on your order. You are expected to give IV push medication safely. So if you don't know how fast to give it, you need to look it up. That's an expectation here in the sim lab and also in the hospital. Um, you don't just make assumptions like, it's probably safe at two minutes. No, 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 no. Look it up. That's absolutely required for nursing that you look up med administration when you don't know how fast to give it. Now, if they have normal saline running already, the flush beforehand is not all that necessary, but you probably should flush afterwards to push the med into the patient before you leave the room. And that is it. That's how you give a med in our simulation lab, most closely um, tying with hospital procedure. Okay.